Hi there, Mr. Keesbert here. Wanted to talk to you today a little bit about slavery in the South uh, in the early to mid 1800s. The first slide I want to show you here has to do with what the cotton gin did to slavery. So the cotton gin was invented around 1790 by Eli Whitney. It revolutionized the cotton industry. Uh, instead of slaves having to pick apart um, the seeds by hand, they could put them, run them through a hand crank machine and later uh, they would attach steam powered engines to it and it would pull the seeds uh, and separate those seeds from the cotton fibers. Um, it could do the job of 50 slaves um, with only one. And uh, so initially we saw a reduction in the number of slaves. However, when you move ahead, you could see that slavery grew exponentially. Um, after 1800, it really took off. The reason why it took off was because farmers saw that you know, they usually set aside tons of time, months, to um, process the cotton, pull the seeds from the cotton, and now they could get it done in a matter of days. And so by doing so, they started to realize, gee, if we want to expand our profits, we can get more cotton. But in order to have more cotton, we have to have more land. In order to have more land, we got to buy that. Then we got to have people work the land. Gee, that means we need more slaves. And so they start to see a massive increase in the number of slaves, up to 4 million, 4 million slaves in the South by 1860, which was right around the time of the start of the Civil War. With so many slaves on the plantation, many of them were looking for ways out. And of course, some of them tried to escape, which we'll get to more on that in a minute. Um, others tried to resist in, in little ways, uh, just things to get under the skin of the owners, uh, the, the plantation owners. Um, but uh, one thing that they did was they tried to focus on their faith. And uh, typically, slaves would sing spirituals. These spirituals were along the lines of freedom in terms of um, the next life. You know, once I pass away, I'll be free. Um, it was also to help pass the time um, and, and kind of keep beat with, um, with the work that they did on the plantations and things like that. And, uh, and so these became very, very important parts of the slaves' lives. Um, uh, spirituals and, and singing um, and music became an integral part of everything that they did in their culture uh, to try to, again, pass the time and focus on the positives of being free someday, either literally free or free in the afterlife. The next slide has to do with slave codes, and slave codes were laws that restricted the movements of slaves or uh, told slaves what they could and couldn't do uh, on a particular basis. And uh, slave codes early on certainly were restrictive. Things like slaves could not move from plantation to plantation without a pass. Uh, slaves were not allowed to um, possess a gun um, in the evening hours after dark. Uh, they were not allowed to get an education beyond maybe second grade level education, you know, some very basic reading, writing, and arithmetic. But as time went on, um, because uh, slaves started to escape uh, or tried to resist in different ways, many of the slave owners decided to uh, work on getting more and more slave codes and be more and more restrictive. So things like passes disappeared. Slaves weren't allowed on the plantations later in the 1800s. Uh, slaves were not allowed to have guns in their possession. Slaves weren't even allowed to have any degree of education, um, which of course led to more and more attempts at escape and more and more resistance, which led to a vicious cycle. The more times they resisted, the more slave codes. Then they resisted more, then there were more slave codes. So it became kind of a never-ending cycle up until the Civil War. This slide shows the population of slaves in each county in the southern United States in 1860, again, just before the Civil War, just to kind of show it at its height. So there's approximately 4 million slaves throughout the South. In the counties, um, which are the little tiny boxes inside each state that you have there, um, some counties had less than 10% of their population were slaves, some of them over 80%. So, for example, the, the ones that are the black or the dark gray counties, um, they had 70, 80 percent of the total number of people in their counties were slaves. And uh, this was something that the three-fifths compromise way back with the creation of the Constitution allowed them to count three-fifths of their total number of slaves towards taxation and representation purposes, really benefiting them in terms of the representation they got in Congress. Nat Turner was a slave in the South who believed that it was up to him and his group of uh, slave followers to um, do the justice of the Lord by going through and killing the white power structure. Uh, over 50 men, women, and children were killed during Turner's Rebellion. 
and uh, approximately 100 to 200 African Americans were killed during the rebellion, um, including Turner, who was caught. Um, he pled not guilty in a trial. Um, he said that uh, God told me that this was his work and that I needed to do this um, to eliminate this, this uh, scourge, this evil in our country. Um, he was sentenced to death by hanging in 1831, and uh, his co-conspirators who weren't rounded up and killed uh, were eventually killed by hanging later. Uh, this led to, of course, more and more restrictive slave codes and, again, more and more attempts at rebellion. That's all I have for today. I appreciate you tuning in, and uh, have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow.